Hey yo, you know what it is, cause you know who it is. It's the Don. Cheer, Tony Teflon. House Teflon. Teflon 316. We pull the strings. Cheer. And I'm back at you, and I did not expect to be back at you this fast. But people have asked me because the other video was short to explain more about these tapestries and why would I even do a video about the tapestries. And now as the breaker of lies, I know that there are a lot of crazy things put out there on the internet and people make up wacky things. So it is not fair for me, I think, to make fun of people or say things about people and break their lies. Even though it's like I say, when you put it out there, you get what you get. But it's not fair for me just to put it out there and I have put out any thoughts of my own besides the ones that everybody knows about. So I have to think of things. So I have to think of things that, you know, coincide in this book. Now listen, when you read something, especially when you read something many, many times, you could basically convince yourself about a lot of things. You could start seeing, you know, if you stare at the smoke on the clouds in the sky, you start seeing shapes, and there's no doubt about it. It gets down like that, you know. So I think of it like uh, when I used to play, or when I played role-playing games back in the day, and I played fan Final Fantasy. And I remember one time I played Final Fantasy, I, I was in this tower, and I was stuck in the tower. And when you get there to the top, and you defeat this enemy, he casts Ultima. And when he casts Ultima, you, everyone dies. And I, I'm telling you, I was stuck in this spot for months. I could not figure this out. And then this dude came over, and I was playing the game, and he's never played the game before, and he just looked at it, boom, 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 and seen something that I didn't see. Just like that. Fresh eyes, you know? And what he's seen was Life 3 brings you back to life. So after you kill him, you have to cast life three on yourself before that, and you come back to life, and that's how you beat that boy. So I, I think of it like that. I think of it, you know, of, of trying to find something in this book and see if I can grasp something from it, and maybe you people out there, people who haven't thought about it, can find something else to put in there to make it all work together while we wait for the winds of wind to come out and find out, you know, what's really good. So I think it's interesting to do that. So I'm going to get back on these tapestries. Now, why do I bother with these tapestries? And the reason I do is because it's brought up so many times in the book and in the books. It's in three books at least. And when something is brought up this many times, I think, it's brought up more times than their horns. The only thing brought up more than tapestries is people talking about it. It's probably dragon eggs. So if it's brought up all this time, and the fact that Peter Baelish asked specifically to get it, and then when he does get it, he says to Sansa that Cersei's sending him something splendid, it has to mean something. So first let's look back and see exactly what tapestries are in the world of ice and fire, since that is what we are dealing with here. Now, the world of ice and fire says tapestry is a heavy wool wooden textile with intricate designs suitable for wall hangings. Presumably, it is traditional woven on a vertical or floor loom, as it is in our world. All right, so basically, he's saying it's the same in their world as it is in our world. Tapestries are ornate and they depict stories of great battles, events, famous people, etc. Westerosi's noble houses have tapestries portraying their family's history and their and that remaining families that generation and remaining families for generations. Hence, some of them have a worn appearance. So it says that this is what they're used for that depict battle scenes for family history. That is what it is used for. And the fact that it is mentioned so many times must mean that there is something about these tapestries. That there's, there's no way I can see that there's not nothing going on with them. Has to be something. There's no reason for George to remind us of them constantly if there's nothing to do with them. So let's talk about some of these tapestries. 
the known tapestries that are in the world right now. Uh, House Oakhart's tapestries of Sir Oliver Oakhart. He al they also have a tapestry of Alistair Oakhart. They also have tapestries of Lord Oakhart located at Oakhart. Uh, they have tapestries that depict the uh, display conflict between the Oakharts and Dorn. Tapestries uh, woven and the House Derry has tapestries woven of all the Targaryen kings. Portraits of them. From Aegon to the second Ares. Robert Baratheon's tapestries are hunting tapestries from the Red Keep throne room and they were taken down after his death. The White Sword Tower's white wood woolen tapestries located in the round room. The tapestries uh, that depict the Battle of Shield Island. Uh, the tapestries of Raven Trees Hall. Uh, House Connington has tapestries on Griffin's Roof. House Aaron has dozens of splendid tapestries along the Erie's Arcade. So, and then it says in a different thing, old tapestries of King Roberts being delivered to Peter Bayless separately from Robert Baratheon's hunting tapestries in the Red Keep throne room, which were the tapestries of the hunting scenes. So it says right here that the, there is a difference between the old tapestries of King Roberts being delivered than the ones that are in the throne room that Peter is getting. So there's no reason to believe that it doesn't mean anything or it couldn't mean anything. Now in the Game of Thrones, King Robert's entourage, when they travel north to Hart to uh, get Eddard Stark, they stayed at Derry. All right, and on board that stop, Tyrion discovers tapestries depicting the Targaryens from all their lines, and that the Darys hid it away in the cellars when King Robert came to visit. So, right there you have them in the Game of Thrones, the first book, telling you that they're t tapestries that depict family lineage, alright, that was hidden away when Robert came because you don't want Robert to mad at you and that they're tapestries of the Targaryens. So, that it's, t it's pointing something out. Now, in A Feast for Crows, Ares Oakhart recalls the tapestries of Edrin Oakhart at Oak Hall, depicting him sitting over a hundred Dornishmen's head piled over his feet. Now, they had beef with Dorn for a long time. So, they have a lot of tapestries depicting them beating up the Dornish people. All right, in Dance, when Daenerys is a Marine, Zara Zara Doxus gives her the tapestries of Valyria before the Doom. She still takes these tapestries with her as she goes. So obviously she likes them. And it's her looking at the tapestries that makes her say that she promises to return to Westeros. So in my previous vi uh, video about the tapestries and Peter Bayless, also talking about tapestries, tapestries are also known to be right behind the throne. Like that that's a known thing. Sometimes even laying on the throne of the house of this that is the king laid they lay it on top of the throne and the king sits on top of it. That's a known fact. Not in Westeros, but in just real life. So I have said before in the other video that um it was possible that Ned's grandmother or great grandmother was Aaron. And that's what would be her key to um, Peter Baelish getting these tapestries and proving that Sansa is legitimately would be the second tier down if all the Aarons died out naturally. The, the veil would go to the second tier down family, which would be if they was if they was Starks of the Aaron, uh, Starks of the Veil. All right, so I have been I have located by uh, a, a fellow a YouTube person who I can't think of your name. So I, I, I can't think of anyone's name. Uh, so I, I shouldn't even say, <laughs> but I can't. But a uh, uh, family tree of the Starks. 
And so it does not say in this family tree of the stocks that there is an Aaron there on the uh, as a great grandmother, as a grandmother, a great grandmother to Ned or a great great grandmother. But they do have Lorena Royce as I believe their great great grandmother. So that even makes this theory even better and stronger and and possibly the truth because it is the Royces, John Royce to be exact, that is the one who wants to take uh, Robin from Littlefinger. He is the one who tries to take it. He says he wants to take him so he could raise him so he could be honorable and uh, save the uh, Aaron name and Baelish doesn't want to go through with it. He's the one who then is about to, uh, has to stop the battle from jumping off, which gives Peter the upper hand to keep him. So you already see that Jan Royce is already mad at Peter Baelish, and he wants, and he's also tried to marry the Tully chick, Liza Tully, and she turned him down. So he already wants seeing this and wants the veil. So Sansa being from the Royce's bloodline, which is a house that predates the Aarons, if Littlefinger knows this, and the Aarons' bloodline runs out naturally, just dies of natural causes, runs out, not killed off, the Royce's would have to be the next house in line to take it over. Sansa with the Royce bloodline in it would be a, a logical fit to take over the veil. Number one, if she did, for some reason, was able to marry him, uh, marry the, the, the heir right now, it would, obviously, she would be it, but it would give her the blood. And even if he dies before she can, if she's betrothed, it would give her the, the bloodline to stake claim to it. And I think that is what Peter Baelish's plan is. To do that. So I hope that clears up something. And you know, it's like I say, you know, when I do this, I just do it. This is no script. This is just doing it. You know what I mean? And just throwing it out there and putting it out there and seeing what's up. And if and if it ain't what it is, it ain't what it is. But you never know what it could be. And if it is, then boom. I'm the one who said it first. <laughs> So that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? So that's a little bit more on the tapestries. I think the theory fits even better now with her being uh, the Royce, having the bloodline from the Royce guaranteed. We know that for sure, which is an older house than an Aaron. So I think it even fits even better. And I think that is Peter Baelish's plan. So I'm going to get at you, people's champ. Thank you again for listening. Subscribe, like. Tell your friends about me. Put it on your Twitter. I just had to put this up fast because I just felt that since I got that new information, I have to make sure that my stuff is tight so no one can just try to come up there and try to smash it. So on that new information, that is what I'm rolling with. It's basically the same theory. I just didn't have the names because I didn't know. So I thought it would be an Aaron, but it's not. It's a Royce. That makes it even better. And I think that's the way it rolls. Hey, yo, so as always, you know who it is. It's the Don Chia, Tony Teflon, House Teflon, Teflon 316. That means we pull the strings. People's champ, the chairman of the board. Peace. And we out.